Well, I say we get going. I want to make sure we get every minute. It's six fifty nine, but I'm going to call it. And if anyone else comes in, we'll just join. Um, Absolutely. Let me let me hit you up with the proper please. introduction. Excellent. Um, so thank everyone for coming here to the Black Brand offices today. Um, I will start off by just stating why Black Audacity. Why is that the theme for 2023 for Black Brand? Um, in order to be a business owner in America, it already takes a certain level of audacity, given the statistics of how many businesses fail within the first two years, given that you often are putting up your own money up front to take a risk. But being a black business owner in America takes a whole different level of audacity because we are facing a whole different level of statistics, a whole different level of pushback, a whole different fight. Uh, when it comes to being a black business owner. So to choose to be a black business owner in America takes the highest level of audacity. And that's the audacity that we are encouraging all 2023 to laugh in the face of statistics, to ignore some of the obstacles that are put in front of us and still go for the gold anyway. So to lead us in this conversation, we have a business professional, a B-Force consultant, and an expert in the field of government contracting, which is one of the most audacious fields to be in because the government is going to spend over a trillion dollars in, in government contracts. So the level of audacity to think that we could be some of the folks getting a piece of that um, is, is off the scale. So, business professional, government contract specialist, B Force consultant, and our moderator for the night, William Randolph. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. So good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, a couple of things just to set the stage. Uh, I am, as as Brian said, my title is moderator. This isn't a speech. This is a mo I'm moderating. So I, this is really. I hope to shepherd the conversation. So that means there needs to be conversation, okay? So that's number one. Number two is Brian stole a little bit of my thunder just setting up the concept of audaciousness. 26 years I've worked in federal government on the contracting side of the house, meaning I was the guy that was trained to sign the contracts, okay? 26 years. Okay, some of the largest contracts, I've signed billion dollar contracts. And it took me 46 years to believe that I could be on the other side of the table. Now, 26 years signing contracts. It's like, and, and I'm sitting here negotiating with others on the other side of the table. But there was a lot of things that were, that I didn't see that allowed me to, that, that would have allowed me to grasp the concept of, I can do that too. And that's really what I want to talk about, or at least I hope we have an opportunity to talk about when we talk about business. And then kind of the second piece of that is wealth audacity. Mm -hmm. Let's get a definition. Audacity. Help me with the definition. Let's get a definition. Let's get a working definition. What do you think audacity? Daring. Daring. Okay. Let's, let's put it all out there. Bold awareness. Bold. That's true. Awareness. The utter gall. Yes! I love that. That's my phrase. That's my phrase. Okay. Utter, I always say you sheer. The sheer gall. I use unmitigated. <laughs> okay. Unmitigated. <laughs> unmitigated. You want to just go right through this path? The women are on this side. Unmitigated gall. Straight down those doors. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Any, any others you want to add to that? Okay. Anyone? I'm going to add two. Brazen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brazen and then bold extension of bold boldness. That was the definition that Miriam Webster has. It's like brazen boldness. Here's the second piece. Bold, arrogant disregard mm -hmm. for the norm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
bold and arrogant disregard that I disregard. I don't do not accept. Okay, the norm. Any thoughts about any thoughts about disregard? Absolutely. So the bold awareness were, were, were together. They weren't separate. So the awareness was that you're not you're not oblivious to the the, the pushing risk. Push against. Yeah, absolutely. Risk. Yes. It's not oblivious. It's it's the two part. It's a two part. It's like I get it. Mm -hmm. I know what's required. I know what is. I know what the risks are. I know what the penalties could be. I'm going anyway. I'm going anyway. Any other thoughts on the definition? Because we're going to get a solid definition of what we're talking about. Because we're going to be applying this to business and then wealth. Well, I say what my mom used to say. I can't believe you got the nerve. The nerve. Yes. I like that disregard for the norm. I think that's when you build the opportunities. Well, Seiko, I'll tell you. I, when I was preparing for this, it, something hit me. And the concept that hit me was, there has been, in my opinion, are we in a safe room? Absolutely. This is a safe okay. space. We're in a safe room. <laughs> I believe there has been a systematic design strategy to take the audacity away from our people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk, mm -hmm. to Talk to them. I believe it. Okay, now I'm willing to be convinced otherwise. But if my wife was here, she'd tell you how much of a how of a documentary fan I am. I love going back and looking at old PBS is like my favorite television channel. And I go back and look at all of these stories all the way back from building the Panama Canal and and, and Henry Ford building the Model T and building the Hoover Dam. And in every one of these documentaries, you just wait for it, that there was some rule, guidance, law that said, black folks can't play. Mm. Time and time and time again. You just, you just wait for it. You watch it, and, you're like, I, and I said, wait for it now. I was like, okay, I'm just waiting. <laughs> and there is some rule that says, nope, black folks can't, black folks can't realize they can't have the audacity to dream and execute and deliver on the promise of their talents. That's all. I think that's always the ask. Is just let me d deliver on the promise of my talents. Okay. The one that hit me the most. The one that hit me the most is we all know about Greenwood, the Greenwood District, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right. Black, Black, Wall, Street. Street. Black Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. Black Wall Street. During the Trail of Tears, when they moved Indians, forced migration of, of Native Americans from the East to the Midwest. And their slaves. And that's where I'm going, you know, so you <laughs> talk about it. Okay. The Native Americans, in their desire to be audacious and fit in, they were slaveholders. Many of them were slaveholders. 1865. Emancipation Proclamation. Now the land that was given to the Indians, the Oklahoma Territory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you have hundreds, if not thousands, of free black people in the Oklahoma Territory, mm -hmm. once slaves of the Native Americans. And the thing that the Oklahoma Territory had to do to become a state was to take away the ownership rights mm. for black folks. Mm. The audacity of them. Okay, now the audacity is working on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's working on the other side. I'm suggesting that it's a, it was an orchestrated, systematic, sadly successful in some arenas. Mm. Sadly successful, sadly okay. successful. Okay. Okay. An extraction of audacity. And I'm suggesting it's it's time to get it back. It's time to get it back. All right, so let's talk about it. What have you all had? What opportunities? What strategies? What tactics? Let's talk about tactics first. What are some tactics to 
if not grow, demonstrate audacity to foster it. Okay, we gotta plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. Education is the future. Education, nice. Education. Education information, blueprint, mm -hmm. information. Info, blueprint. Demonstration. We'll love it. Demo. Demonstration, yeah, that's a big one. Guidance. Guidance. So what's the guidance? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Guidance. Ultimately, economic emancipation. Okay. So. Economic freedom. All right. Excuse me. Economic freedom. Those are some of the tactics. Some of, what, what about some of them personally? Anyone have any anything that they could share with us that says, ah, oh, personally audacious action that I took. Either in the business, let's call it wealth. Let's put all the things. Wealth, family, legacy. Because audaciousness is audaciousness. audaciousness. Sir. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm coming to everybody. Everybody's gonna get a shot. Yes, sir. Uh, for me, coming from a background that's not so as pleasant as someone would like to have, I took the, the bold audacity to put myself in arenas and networking, you know, fields of people who looked nothing like me, spoke nothing like me, understood mm. nothing as me, and there was success. And for me, uh, a lot of times, I even had conversations with people who bluntly told me in the most kind of kind of way that they see me as a hustler. I'm a businessman. I pay my employees, my taxes, my bookkeeper, just like the next man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of their perception of who I was, and within my, without them knowing my background, only seeing the integrity that I'm bringing, yeah. but I stepped into the arena and I had some success with it. And it's like I'm continue to do it because we need to do it for people that look like me, the people that have a similar, you know. I love it. Uh, Putting yourself in new circles. I was, I was going to use the phrase force. Oh, brother, ain't doing that. Uh, Couldn't see it. Yeah. Forceful attendance or purposeful mm -hmm. inclusion. And mm. Exactly mm. what you were saying, mm. right? Purpose. Mm. Oh, I love that. Purpose. You, know, you, purpose you just you see a place or a group and say, "I belong there," whether you agree to it or you like it or not. Yes, and sir. I'm just going to show up, yes, sir. right? Purpose for yes. Purpose for inclusion. Inclusion. I love that. And here's here's something. Here's where my mind goes for this. I love purposeful inclusion, but the systematic extraction of audacity says you don't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't belong there anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. Why this is needed, <coughs> okay? Why the inclusion is needed is because the audacity of the, the audacity extraction the worked. The, the, the audacity of the exclusion. Yes, mm -hmm. it worked. Purposefully include yourself. Yeah, it worked. Yes, sir. So, is would the word inclusion be synonymous with um, integration? Mm -hmm. It would be. Yeah. Could be. The context that you're using. In, in my opinion, could be. Should that be our ultimate goal, though? Like, you know, if you think about the civil rights era, like black folks, Black Wall Street, as an example, we had black on everything. We didn't need inclusion. We didn't need integration. The moment they integrated. When all deteriorated. Well, that, that's the, the world we live in. I mean, not only do we live in a racially inclusive uh, world, but it, we're talking about a socioeconomic inclusivity. And we're talking about a a, um, a a professional inclusion. You know, we're, we're a religious inclusion, and so you know, we're having conversations and participating in groups that are not necessarily ours, right? Yeah. And so. Um, you know, the, the, the Muslim and Christian can find commonality and work very hard together for the, for the greater good of our, of our people, where we ordinarily would really, religiously disagree, right? And so that purposeful inclusion is, could be, you know, the pass of Second Baptist of Podunk, North Carolina, showing up at the e Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah I love it, I love it. Sir, I, I, where I thought you were going, or where, I, where, or at least let me rephrase it, where I took your comment, is that there's a there's a raging debate that can be had on the secondary and tertiary benefits or penalties of integration. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's an there's an argument that can be had. There. Evidence, yeah, okay. there's an argument can be. Right. What I say is, give me the choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't I choose think, for me. That's, that's I don't think I don't there's do. a debate. I think that it's actually a fact. I mean, my my parents are. are, are 
a part of the civil rights generation. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you the differences in yeah. the neighborhood, their wealth, their comfort, the low crime rates and everything. And one of the biggest problem was the, the government's social structure of integration and different types of uh, 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 economic programs that they thought were meant to free us, but actually enslave us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Brian, I, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah no, just because uh, what this brother was saying about integration, should that be the goal? I, I don't think that should be the goal, but I think it should be a goal because integration is uh, what we call necessary but not sufficient. Like, mm -hmm. We shouldn't be kept out of that room, mm -hmm. but our goal should not be to sit at a table with white people. That should not be the ultimate goal. No, no, no. But well, the choice, that road the choice, should be about. the choice. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not disallowed in that room, but that room is not I can go the, if I want the to. top. Yeah. That room is yeah. not. If it serves me, that's right. Yeah. If that room yeah. serves me, serves me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I see uh, integration and inclusion as being very different, and historically, like you were mentioning, they are very different. So inclusion. You include people who have similarity. They have the same weight. They yeah. have the same ability. You know, so they have a level playing field mm -hmm. when you include. Mm -hmm. But integrating, you can integrate somebody who has no say. You can, they can just be there. You know, and, mm -hmm. and when we look at how integration played out here in the United States of America, it's like, yeah, you can come here, but you don't have the economic power, you don't have the political power, mm -hmm. you don't have the social yeah. structure. You don't have the ability to employ anymore because you know because of the results yeah. of the way and the civil rights movement wasn't focused on integration that's what the government allowed to yeah. prevent i mean because you know hoover was like we got to stop the rise of the black messiah you know king and some of his other and some of the other groups weren't fighting for integration but that's what they ended up with right and so they thought it would be a launching pad and it ended up that's what everyone valued in, in terms of what the media portrayed. But they weren't fighting for integration. They were like, look, they were saying, look, I pay taxes. I should get the same level of police protection. I should get the same level of fire protection. I should have the same vote. I, I should have my civil rights, you know? I thought it was more the immigration. Um, that's mission, how it's like, been the played out. in those restaurants. Yeah, that's that's how it's played like, out. I want to eat at the same restaurant the white people eat at. I thought that's that how it's right out. If you, if you read Dr. King, you know, mm -hmm. most people, Focus on Dr. King's um, I Have a Dream speech. But you know, three years later, he recounted all, recanted all of that. He and said, that was uh, I was wrong. Basically. But that's not what America tells us. They just keep pushing mm -hmm. But if you read his writings, he was like, now nah, we'll take this as a first step. Mm -hmm. right. Because the, the the protests and those those events mm -hmm. were to draw attention to the inequity mm -hmm. and the hypocrisy of America. Right. It wasn't to, and, and yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, that, I, I think that's I think that's a fair critique. Sure. So, so to, to go back to this, yes. I would say that if we're looking for empowerment, we're not looking for integration. We're looking for inclusion. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm just a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me add something to that. Um, it, and I think the whole point when we look at um integration, and I think we always put a negative connotation on that when we talk about black and white, but I really see that us here is integration mm -hmm. of our different mindset, our different professions, True. our different um, where that. we can come from. True. We're integrating what we could have. We had the audacity to have this meeting <laughs> to, to do this and everything and talk about it and really consult and most likely will leave here with much more to do more. Yeah. And so I, I love that. So I, I I just see the different sides of integration and inclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, 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 here's where I think some, I can't use many, some of our leadership bodies have gone wrong. We always talk about that there is not a monolithic African American community, but we always want everybody to line up and say, we do it this way. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, you got to pick. You gotta, you gotta, in my opinion, you gotta pick. Yeah, right. do, you, do you want us to be monolithic or do you want us to be, we got all shape. I'm a country boy from Virginia. I grew up on a hundred acre tobacco farm. Okay. Might, might not have the same experience as some others that may have had city experiences 
But I hate inner city. Because like, what's the inner city and outer city? That hurts me. That hurts me. It's just a city experience. Okay. That's language. That's code. That's code for life. That's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's the system. That's the system. That's the system, gentlemen. That's the system. And I mean, and, and let me be wrong. Let me be my personal opinion. Those that manage that system have been audacious. And sadly, success. To also go with that, I think, yeah, they have been audacious with it. Yeah. But have we been blind to it? Hmm. Meaning that at some point in time, some of our, even some of our parents, they were just kind of like, we just gonna, we wanna, don't wanna make those waves. Don't make waves. Don't make waves. We're just gonna ride it. Yeah, right. Over Sir. the last two decades. Brothers, fair. That's a fair, you know, I'm getting fair critique. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I often, I applaud the new generation. You know, when I was the new generation, the point the label a new generation, they're like, oh, they're brash. They don't, they don't want to accept the status quo. I'm like, thank God they're here. Yeah. Okay, thank God they're here. Because if you get to my age, I'm 52, okay, you you figure out how to maneuver. And he's like, look, don't, don't, let's just stay here. You know, we're doing okay. You know, kids have gone to school, got a little money in the bank, you know, got a car too, taking a vacation or two. Let's not, let's not, let's not be brash. Okay, now let me shoot them young, them young folks like, let's take this, burn the plane down. Yeah. Yeah. Burn it down, start over. <laughs> Okay, so I applaud them. So I think that's a fair critique that every generation, um, we, 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 can, we can go, and it's not that far of our history that's pretty close to here. Southampton County, mm -hmm. I'm sure you all have heard the stories of the slave revolts that happened in Southampton County, right over the bridge. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, right over the bridge. And it would have been successful if some of the folks was like, look, hey, Leave this thing alone. I'm in the house. I got my thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, 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 just, let's just be real. Let's be real. And we've had versions of that mm. through the years. I can rock the boat. Hey. Mm. You know. I got my piece. I got mine. Yeah, yeah. Me and mine got mine. Don't no, hey, don't tear this thing apart. He's like, I'm gonna turn it down. Burn it down. Yeah. Burn it down. Okay. So let's talk. We talked some tactics. We talked some individual stuff. We talked. We had a great conversation about inclusion as compared to integration tactics. I don't want to go to something sp specific. We, one of our gentlemen said he put himself in new circles. What are some others? What are some others? What are some things you've done? Partnership. Say that again. Partnership. Partnerships. Nice. Good, good, good. Say more, sir. So. I don't try to be the smartest person in the room. I try to understand where I can fit in with others and say, okay, how can I help my business grow and your business grow at the same time? Yeah. You know, um, you know, we own a what how do I say a candle, fragrance, wine. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that we've been able to do with with for instance our candles, now we're getting calls from other business to come in and do it. I have one now with a uh, um, brewery down in, um, in Norfolk. So, first Tuesday of every month we go, and you know, lo and behold, we bring like 20 people, so we have his business grow. Yeah. And at the same time, we have the our business grow. So, just all these different types of partnerships that I needed to include myself in, yeah. because most of these places are, you know, with white owners. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Partnerships. <clears throat> Folks, I, I, I know you know, you have no, I know you all recall, maybe two years, maybe, maybe it might have been, I think it was pre-pandemic, so let's call it, let's call it three years ago. Rich Lou Dennis, you remember, you remember that name? Rich Lou Dennis Sundial, he was the CEO of Sundial, the hair, mm -hmm. hair care, sold it to, the, to Unilever. Mm -hmm. Billion dollar deal. Wow. They started selling, they started selling shea butter on the streets in, in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Him and his mom, just to survive, turned it into Sundial and sold it. And all our portions of our community gave him hell. He's like, this was a multi-billion dollar black owned business and you sold it. You sold controlling interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, we have to realize sometimes that a piece of a watermelon is way more than all of a grape. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can build a watermelon, 
if you can build the water, man, what do you do? He just sold off control and interest of it. And guess what he did? He went and bought Essence, the magazine. Okay, so he could do way more. He could do way more with the sliver of the, with 49% of the watermelon than he could with all of the Great orange or tangerine. Is this the same thing? Um, the gentleman who um, on BET, um, uh, Robert Johnson, yeah. and he yeah. said that, and his wife. Yeah, but he said, look at how many billionaires he made yeah. from, from the, that action. Yeah, that action. I love it. I love it. So well, I love the idea of partnership. Th that's kind of a kind of a big picture level, but oh, excuse me, a a celebrity level. Let's call it that. But this play happens all the time in the federal government state. It happens all the time. And people will, people will hold a, a grape and squeeze it so tight when they could just partner with somebody and create something amazing. Yes, sir. So I'm thinking foresight, right? To, 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 to my vision of everything. Like, we're right now, I think, to the conversation of minds and community, you know, people, business owners, who, you know, I don't know who everybody is, right? But with foresight and information that we're sharing right now, to know that the masses may not be able to realize what that billion dollar sale could do for the community for the next 10, 15 years. So I know that the foresight has to be like my vision for my family, my future, and for the people I want to affect, or, or, or us as individuals, with the foresight that we have. Yeah. And then collectively, you know what I'm saying? That watermelon can turn into. Uh, yeah, that watermelon has seeds. And, 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 <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. We cracking codes now. There we go. You get a slice of that watermelon, how many seeds you got? You got that grape? That yes. grape got two or three seeds in it, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That slice of watermelon and choke a horse. But again, <laughs> I, I, go back to, I go back to the system, the system that was designed to extract the audacity, mm. okay? It's like no, keep keep your keep keep your grape. Mm -hmm. We're we gonna, we gonna let one or two people get a grape. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna let one or two, and and it's like no, don't get don't don't do don't get too don't rock the horse, don't don't get, don't get the cart off the rails. I think there is something to that. The system was the job. Yes, sir. When I think about the system, think about how you boil a crab. Mm -hmm. You don't put the crab in hot water. Mm -hmm. you, Raise the temperature Talk to me now. so that I will, I will <clears throat> myself to sleep, basically. Yes. And then by the time I realize what has happened, it's too late. So when I think about the system, and you know, I grew up in Carolina, and um, you know, there was a lot of don't go there, don't go here, don't do this, don't do that. So certain words were said that you knew this isn't my place. Yeah. But then I also learned, I, you know, it's like I woke up one day and I was to the point where, you know, if I am trying to talk to people that are supposed to be with me, I'm talking about, let's say, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And it looked at me as if, you know, you have the audacity to speak about things that we have never done. That's not our experience. So yeah. Then, you know, so then yeah. I removed myself. I was like, okay, so I removed myself and came here. Yeah. And now it's, you know, we've seen you grow. What are you doing? The same thing I'm trying to talk to you. Yeah, in, yeah. But I love you just it. see the results. I love it, sir. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to piggyback on that. I want to just pose a question. Our brother said that the environment says we don't do this, we don't do that. It's passing along cultural and social mores of what we don't do. Can we replicate that for what we do? Yes, do? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wonder, yes, sir. can we replicate that? Can we can we be intentional yes, about saying this is who we are, this is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna be about, this is what we're gonna focus on, this is what we're gonna train on, this is what we're gonna educate on. And we can be just we can build our own system. Yep. We can build because we know the system works. Yeah. Okay, we know the system works. Can we, can, can we add discomfort to that right mm. now? Here. Discomfort. Yes. What does that mean? Getting outside of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Right? right? That's what you need. Right? Yes. We have to experience a certain level of discomfort, A, to learn, B, to experience, and, and uh, uh, C, to gain. Love it. Right? Love it. Love it. Are we willing to? I'm willing. Leave home. Are we living I'm, to? I'm gonna add that one. Willingness. Yes. Are we willing to leave our geographic area? Leave mom and them. But mom, right? mom and them. Yeah. <laughs> In that discomfort, you also have to humble yourself and say, "I don't know everything." So you have to get like put your ego aside and say, "Your masculinity sometimes will say, you know what? I don't know everything, and because I don't know everything, 
who can I go to and know that I can trust this person with me saying, I don't know, can you teach me? Yeah, agree, yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, I thought I saw a comment. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, just to put something along, uh, alongside there, I think a lot of times we have to be strong enough in our abilities to to want to make say you know I'm gonna stick to my guns. Mm. I, I, I know I know what my field is. Confidence, confidence, confidence. You know, confidence. You, know fast, you know, you know, sticking to your guns. You know, sometimes your your decision ain't the best decision for everybody. For everybody, you know, everybody's right. situation is different. Yes. You know? So. Yes, I remember my yeah, father used to home. tell me yeah. all the time when I was young, everybody that come can't go. No, yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Everybody that come can't go. Yeah. Right. So you were asking about tactics. Yes. Uh, fostering um, audacity. For me, from my experience, it was starting small, like practice. Like, Ooh. Um, breaking small social mores, as you were saying. Right. Small social rules. Like, uh, I can remember my teenage years, Going to the movies in my pajamas. Did you think it was a big deal? <laughs> my mom thought it was a big deal. I thought it was a big deal. My sister was like, people are going to make fun of you if you do this. Yeah. I went and did it and probably got judged and came home and it was like, I did this thing that people they said they were going to judge me for right. and I'm not hurt. Like, I did yeah. home and I'm still I love it. Peace. I love it. That is like fostering the mindset to later be the only black guy in the room about tech. Yeah, that's, that's audacity. Yeah. I, 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 I think there's a, isn't there a comedian, his, 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 his tagline is, but did you die? <laughs> he said, everything he talks about, and he comes back to, but did you die? And they're like, no, if you don't die, let's keep it. Audacity, let's keep going. I love that. I love it, sir. All right, so I'm going to backtrack in regards to partnership. Yes. So the gentleman you um, told us about, the shade butter. Yes. And he sold out to Unilever. Yes. Isn't the, the point of it all equity? Like so, like I think for him and his family, yeah. So you 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 consider the Unilever guys his partners? They're no longer his partners, are they? They're his, they're his buyers. Well, I, they are partners because he still owns part of it. Oh, he still he, 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 he sold controlling interest. Yeah, okay. Right. He sold at, at least fifty one percent because now it's no longer black owned. Right. Okay, but he still got a he got a nice slice of the watermelon. Right. So he took his cash and he went and bought something. Okay, you know, Black Magazine, Black Women's Magazine, he's now the owner of Essence. He has other assets. So he's got other stuff. Right. He's created other stuff. He took one thing and made two things out of it. Well, in a real world, world, a real world example, I, we were approached, my company was approached uh, to sell. Oh, don't sell, don't sell, don't sell. You know? And I was listening to some of the other VCs, and this one guy said one thing, he says, it is, it is far better to own. 50%, 60% of a $3 million company that own 100% of a $300,000 company, mm -hmm. which is your grape and watermelon. Yeah. And again, he didn't get it. And so finally, you know, I opened up the conversation with again. Another that says, don't be opposed to sell. We always need to put our position, self in a position to sell because once we sell, we now in a position to go buy what we want. Yes and build and do even better and great things. Sure. I just want to give you a real world example. Yeah, that's real. It, it, it is real. And, and it does, you, you, you get, he was in his level of discomfort. But wouldn't that infer that you don't want what you already own? When you say that I can go, I'm in a position to buy something that I want. But you well, already own something. But, 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 but I had to learn that what I own wasn't all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's like right. somebody wants to buy, but it's like yeah. playing Monopoly, right? Mm -hmm. You have a house on the on the street. The point is to own the whole block, right? Right. 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 And so you got to sell that one house to buy the next house. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. The next houses. Yeah. Now I was coming. <laughs> and I was happy. It happened to me at like twelve. Right. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I can be happy with happy meal. And, and as you grow, okay. you need an acquire. And that, that's the sport. So we're not selling because we don't like it. Yeah. That's our baby. Yeah. You know, we may write some clauses in there to give us some sort of say in how the business run or leave a manager from our team in, in it. You know, there's a way to do that right. to make sure that is what we built. But at, at the same time, you can now, we can go buy what we want and we can build a business this time with far more money. Yeah. Mm. And, and make greater, more audacious decisions yeah. mm. from the onset. And, and sir, what I would also add is the the business of today may not be the business of tomorrow. That's right. Mm. 
I remember a few years ago, Percy Miller, Master Peter, <coughs> wanted to buy a Reebok. Mm -hmm. Okay, wanted to buy a Reebok, mm -hmm. and wouldn't let him cut the deal. You couldn't couldn't make the deal happen. Yeah. It was three days ago. I was in Walmart. Reebok is now a Walmart brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's in Walmart. Yeah. Yes. As either took their place as number two. Yeah. It's, it's a Walmart brand. So and for a while, Reeboks were all the rage. I remember. Yeah. I remember the years. So allow me to play devil's advocate. Sure. Right? So um, Buffy did a speech once, and a guy asked him, "When's a great? When's a good time to sell a company or sell a stock?" And Buffy said, "A, a good time to sell a stock is never. He'll never sell. Like the company, see, his his, his objective is to own a hundred percent." Of whatever he's, if he can, like you can, you never own 100 percent of Coca Cola, but like the smaller companies, like Seeds Candy, for an example, yeah. he's never going to sell it. So like, has he never sold? So, so I was like, has he never sold? If I may interject, I, that is a perspective, right? We have to evaluate what's our goal, yeah. right? If, and in all transparency, I've had this blunder mm -hmm. of where I thought, man. I'm gonna own, but if you sell, it puts you in a, a greater <coughs> position to have more leverage. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not just impacting my entity, but now we talk about capital being sparse in our community. Now we can mentor someone. Now we could put seed for them, Come right? The best. Absolutely. Right. So it's, I would think it's, it's evil to sell in years past. Mm -hmm. It may be good to sell. It may not be good to sell. Sure. What road is going to get you to the destination that you're driving for? Sure. And I think we have to have the the autonomy to to make that decision. Sure. The freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think Buffett has a system. Yeah. He has a system. He, he, he trades a system. Absolutely. Right. He trades a system that is not necessarily universally shared. Absolutely. It's worked for him. Absolutely. Okay. It's worked for him, but in my opinion, that's us. It's one. It's one of many systems. Absolutely. Well, and Buffett doesn't buy it. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He slept yeah. on Apple for, for, for years. Right. You know, and then it's like, oh, this thing. And he also has examples of selling out too fast as well, where a company would be worth billions now and he only made a few few million off the Oh, no. Yeah. Tough, like, tough, tough duty. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I get what you guys are saying. Yeah. But to your point, it's, it's all, I guess, data dependent, yeah. I, I suppose. Yeah, I would, I would double down on that to. Only if it makes sense. Right. I think that our community has gone so long with not being able to have ownership oh, we that we might have yes. overlearned yes. 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 the lesson yes. of ownership. Yes. So I'm in music management and I talk to artists all the time and they're like, oh, I'm not giving up ownership on my music. And if that's your goal, cool. Mm -hmm. But how much is your music making you right now when you own 100% <coughs> of it? Mm -hmm. And if you sold 50% of it and it can make you millions of dollars a, a year, would that be worth it to you? Would that make sense? Yeah. And that's why you saw Bruce Springsteen. Oh, everybody's selling their cattle uh, right what's now. The, uh, uh, what's the young boy? Justin uh, Bieber just did it a couple Bieber. days ago. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're taking value and exchanging. They're reconstituting what value looks like. You can take the dollars over here, take dollars out and put it into something else. So whatever. You used the word equity earlier, and I think that's this whole yeah. discourse. It's just right. like that. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, what to do, gentlemen? Hmm? Other to dos, other to dos. Let's get tackled. Let's 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 let's, let, let's leave with some things to do. I think I learned what you learned. Oh, okay. Yeah, unlearn is going to be a good. You know what you said earlier was <coughs> the business of today is not the business may not be the business of tomorrow. I go back and say the business of yesterday is not the business of today. Mm. So you know what we may have learned about ownership. You know we learned the American dream is all about owning and. Now you're looking and saying, 20 years ago, you may never thought about someone, in, you know, vacationing in your home. Mm -hmm. And you <laughs> <laughs> huh. it. And huh. now it's, it. it, 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 it's, it's totally changed where, okay, if I can go away for two weeks out of the year and have somebody live in my home and all of a sudden pay the entire mortgage off one week, yeah. why not? So we need to be constantly, you have to unlearn what you've learned sometimes to think, okay, i got to unpack after a while. Sure. You know, this suitcase is too full. What am I, I can't take the same clothes everywhere I go. So I have to unpack in order to be where I need to be. 
love that. I love that. Yeah, you know, um, with my wife and I are in business, and she learned that you had to do everything. And one of the things that we've struggled with is uh, when to let others do things. Delegate. And I'm I'm quicker to say we need to delegate and hire and have somebody do this, this, yeah. this, and this if we're making a profit. Cause, and she was like, no, we got to do everything because nobody's going to do it the way I do it. And we found that <clears throat> moving to allow others who are professionals to do things allows us to do more things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that kind of goes into the, this discussion. That, yeah. You know, sometimes you have to unlearn. Unlearn, yeah, agreed. Unlearn that you have to do everything. Yeah. Because that's not how you scale. And I, I think, you know, we're learning more and more about scaling now. And the idea of scaling wasn't something that I heard in business circles, the, the circles I was in yeah. 20 years ago. But for the last seven years, I've been around people who are constantly talking about scaling, uh, scaling their businesses. And they're constantly saying, you have to let go of certain things and go after go after certain things. Yeah, and that was totally adverse to what I learned. Uh, I don't know if this is up there. Uh, I'm thinking about reinventing. You know, reinventing the ideas. I right, so we're going to go along with you. Said this gave me thought. So okay. I own a commercial cleaning company. Okay. Uh, my mom's first husband, my little brother's dad, owned one. My mom has never lived that better in her life when he had that business. He had family work and everybody. Yeah. My, you know, he let go. My uncle had a commercial cleaning business. Did really good. He died, God bless his soul. My belief is when you talk about scaling, it's like one of my, not my fear, but one of my biggest goals is to never be, I don't want to be 10 or 15 years into mom about business, right? Just like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, so right. we talk about delegating. My company's grown. I, I, I started it three years ago, quit my job at 21. I'm at 135,000 now, easily, right? And now it's like, all right, like what I'm about to do now, lines of credit, let's jump into this thing, you know what I'm saying? Employees, you know, Find better jobs, a lot of different spheres to scale, right? To, and then it's like, all right, now I'm trying to figure out my best ways to reinvent my process of teaching these people through, through the stuff that we never learned. Like, I now have to have a mission statement. You know, with my core values, I need, I'm talking to companies like uh, ADP and all this other stuff to try to go ahead and HR stuff, right? Yeah. I'm just a random dude, but this is what I'm learning. So it's like me re reinventing the belief system of what a company can be, right? So I just want to have to be mom and pop, Joe Blue. Uncle Ryan and them around the corner been cutting grass for the past twenty years out of out of truck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I believe reinventing beliefs is. Uh, I, I think I think it's fair. What I have heard, I'm coming to you, gentlemen. What what I have heard people say is hustling is a season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hustling is a season. Mm -hmm. It's one of four seasons. It is hustle, arrive, survive, right. And then thrive. Get to it. Get to it. And each one of those had a set of characteristics, strategies, tactics, tools, activities. Okay? Hustle is a season. We're going to, everybody has to hustle at some time, but it's a season. Sir. I think um, one of the parts when we talk about almost connected to this, um, you're, we're at a certain point in our lives that we have the ability and opportunity to take on roles or even create roles, not just for ourselves, but for others. Yeah. We have the audacity to say that I can be in the Black Chamber of Commerce <laughs> and then with, with Brian's help have businesses come through here and become CEOs of their business, not just hustling, yeah. but get to a point that they have balance sheets, they have cash flow, yes. they have, you know, doing all those different things. But to take on roles, myself personally, when we look at our, um, when we talk about civil rights, we talk about justice, we talk about history, we have NWSPs, urban leagues. The, the, the point is that we can actually take on roles in those different organizations and make sure our, our um, black voice is heard and continued on through justice. It's, it's just the point that we can do it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I love that. I love that. Sir, I saw your hand. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you just say because a lot of times, and I, you know, and, and some spaces that I've been in over the last two years, you don't see many of our faces. Right? Still, still, still. And, still. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, since we hit in the open room, I'm gonna talk about the canvas thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's a safe space. It is very. I hope anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I've done a lot of travel over the last two years, going to different conferences, learning and you know about you know the growth facilities, the, the dispensaries, and things of that nature. It's not many of us in these fields, mm -hmm. you know. And to your point, just trying to take what you don't want to be a mom and pop to bring make it bigger and something. It's it's very difficult because sometimes you don't have the branding to push yourself behind. Nowadays, it's real easy to brand yourself, whether it's a good way or a bad way. Internet, uh, social media, things like that, using those type of tools, that wasn't an advantage for our parents when they were coming up. So now, that new school of thought is, I need content, I need to put myself out yep. there so that someone is looking at me to be able to do my job and make it so that I ain't in that mom and pop thought process. Right. It's all about getting it out there. <clears throat> and sometimes we don't have those avenues or take that bold step to say, hey, you know what? I know that what I have can be up on a big, bigger and grander scale. Yeah. yeah, it's real, it's real. I mean, there's a lot of spaces what what has what has always intrigued me about the cannabis space is I, I read an article that said that you can go look at the um the, the judicial system files and you see a dis, disproportionate number of African Americans have been caught up in the negative aspects pre-legality and all that stuff. So we've, we've, we've borne the burden of the illegal activity around the space. And as soon as it becomes legal, we ain't in the room. Right, right. Okay? Yeah. That, that's, 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 system. System, it's time to make some money, okay? It's time to make some money. It's like, oh, it's, 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 it seems harder to get in the room. Let's do some more to do. Let's, yes, sir. I would say take a revolutionary approach. Mm. Mm. I love it. Revolutionary. Say more. I talked about being a change maker. And um, my goal or my LinkedIn tag is to revolutionize my industry, which is container. Uh, transportation so I want to see how I can impact my industry yeah. in a way that may not meet the status quo and uh, just taking a different <coughs> angle at it so maybe oh, y'all can yeah. die I just do that out oh no listen, 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 you can you, die in that he, he threw something I caught it I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't write that so, so what, what about it says about it it's revolutionary it's, it's audacity mm -hmm. This is a safe space. Yeah. And it's saying I might plant somewhere it might be bigger than me. But so I heard a long time ago somebody told me called wisdom of the crowd. Wisdom of the crowd. It's speaking to people right where they are. Mm -hmm. people right where they are. Mm -hmm. right? On a on the complex yes, level sir. down to the to the random joke level. Yes, sir. So, right? With that being said, I'm thinking right now how we can attack different spaces because we have different faces, we have different understanding mm -hmm. level of information, I mean, connectivity and networking skills, right? Mm -hmm. Who would believe uh, you're in the container space? Yes, sir. Do you dive in government? Uh, dibble dabble. Well, this so happy. I'm some random dude, but I know a guy that owns a company called Republic Capital Access. He he loans money to people that's in the government space. He's a great friend of mine. Help me secure a loan. It's the network that we have Partnership. to intentionally yep. place people in the, because I'm just, yeah, I know it's Cam right there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know I'm not saying this. No, 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 yeah, 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 but what he's that. talking about, you have to have what? Yeah. Two million in sales. No, our EO is two fifty, but they have a one million group and a five million dollar group. You know, okay. being right, average, right. you know, you got a business you can get in. Right. But EO oh, okay. two fifty or better, 
And gotcha. then after that, you got a, you got the million and the five million. Right, you got right, right. Just me. He's, a, he's bumping to the million. Yes, yes, the energy is different. Yeah. When we talk about impact, impact of people in the room, just like right now, right? right? And I'm looking, like I said, the audacity in the revolution. Like, right, I'm just throwing a seat out there. No, no, no matter. But right now, the idea of the people that you do, the network, the communication that you have with these other people, you can begin to implement this. Systematically, specifically, Focused on doing exactly what needs to be done. Right? Right. I ain't talking about just planting a seed because we talk about righteousness. Mm -hmm. We talk about just inclusion. Yeah. We talk about, but you can actually do that right now. Yeah. Right now, this can start today with whoever, and then y'all know y'all come together and then y'all can go to smart. I see you're a venture capitalist. Yeah. I don't know you, but you look sharp, you look smart. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just throwing out there, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could be intentional about putting people in these places with all the core goal of. Building what we had as black people as the black brown. Y'all probably are doing it. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, I love it. You got to love it. Let me talk to you about it. I know he has some of the conversation. I think all of it, I pick it back on something you said earlier. It's faith. You got to have a little bit of faith. No doubt. You got to have a little bit of faith because I think when you were saying everybody can go, it's a scripture in, again, say space in the Bible, Genesis 30, about Abraham going up to the mountain. Part of it is that Abraham was walking with his servants, mm -hmm. but going up to the mountains to to um, to slay his son, mm -hmm. he told them that he couldn't sit, stay with the asses. Mm -hmm. So when you go up these mountains, when you have to have a little bit of faith to mm -hmm. go up to the unknown, you have to leave some people behind. Yeah. And mm -hmm. some parts of this new circle, these partnerships mm -hmm. that we've heard on these starting small or unlearned behaviors mm -hmm. because people have taught us so much and talked to us that year yes you can't do it yes. you shouldn't do it it's gonna cost too much you're not strong enough mm -hmm. you gotta have faith in yourself mm -hmm. and have that confidence to know that when you go up that mountain it may be a ram in that bush <coughs> just to to give you that true sector of growing into something bigger yeah so brother i appreciate that because I, I, I tell you some of the times i have wondered why our community, and oftentimes, sometimes many of our own family say, don't do it, mm -hmm. don't stay small, don't try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly believe, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and maybe I'm a little Pollyanna about it, but I believe they actually have our best interests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. yeah. The system has said, ooh, the person that rises above the crowd gets shot at. Mm, okay, yeah. the person that rises above the crowd always is the first target to get shot at. Mm. So I, I think our families want the best for us. I, I, okay, I, I, <laughs> we go. he named it. He named it. I think they want the best for us, but the audacity, you know, it's like if if you audacity has been penalized. Let me say it that way. Mm. There have been times in our history where audacity has been penalized. And I just think there are some lessons that have been learned that need to be unlearned. Unlearned. Mm. Unlearned. Yes, sir. You go back to the to do's and stuff and going back to what the brother man said. We have people in this room. Brian and Blair have numerous businesses that have different levels. Their connections are different levels throughout, you know, the city and everything. And if we as African Americans, there's one thing that I talked to with Blair before and before um, B Force came, B Force, and everything. We were utilizing um, white millionaires as the trainers. <coughs> so, and I was like, "There's no black millionaires out here. There's no black trainers out here." Mm -hmm. I think you know. It was like, "Why?" But we do. We have to actually get to the point of standing up and being, saying, "This is what I do, and I'm here to help and support. Let me use my knowledge and my resources, my connections for what you are doing." And then. Just like you said earlier, to humble yourself and say, I need that help so I can become just as high as you so that I can bring on the next person yeah. and the next person and the next person. Yeah. That's a to-do that we need to stand up and then look back and bring the next person up. Yeah, Each yeah, there's, some, yeah, yeah. There's, some, there's some cycles that sadly need to be broken. Another thing, yeah, brother, so like, yes. has been alluded to a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It's on the tactics as blueprint, <clears throat> but establishing, and you said system, mm -hmm establishing a system so as we are experimenting going along the process documenting that so when you have the person where you have the opportunity to delegate you don't have to say this is the end result you can provide them some type of structure of these are the steps right while still providing them the 
creativity, uh, the opportunity to be creative and approaching it differently, but you, you've given them safety and you've given them a proven track record that they can follow. Mm -hmm. so, Operating manual. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm going to tap on um, the, the one was the revolutionary approach. I, I want to just take it to the. I want to take it to the next. I want to take it to one next level. Talk about innovation. Innovation. We'll talk about. Give you a five minute. Moment. Okay, got it. Innovation. This is the last one for me, and then I'll. I'm, I'll be. Wait, I'll be willing to take all the other comments. Innovation from a standpoint of the larger community loves our cultural yeah. innovation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eat, Eat it up. It up. Mm -hmm. From a trend perspective, yes. we are trend setters yes. and trend lifestyle. creators yeah. and lifestyle creators. Yeah. Inventors of the cool. Can we tap into that same energy? It's monetizing. Hmm. Not only, I, yes, of course, I'm always on about the dollar. Yes, I don't want to over, 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 overshadow that. But can we leverage that energy that's that created in the culture and transpose it into other channels? Hmm. Business, wealth creation, family creation, legacy creation. You know, we have that ladies on the other side of the building. Okay. And I tell you, the ladies are building businesses like crazy. Oh, yes. You read the, you read the, you read the, you read the stats. Yes, sir. Black women crushing it. In every education yes. business. Okay. I mean, right. every 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 but here's what I'll tell you, gentlemen. When you look backwards in the history, it's only our successes are only when we can defend them. Ooh. When we can defend them. So while the ladies are doing their amazing things, someone's got to guard the gate. Okay. So I believe it's a combo. We, we can't. That's too strong. We need to be with them. Okay. That's where I'm at. We need to be with them. We need to be building teams. While many other communities are saying, no, I can do it alone and all this stuff. This is the exact time we need to be building teams. Okay. Eat lunches. Heating them up and eating them. <laughs> eating them up and eating them. Okay. So that was my last comment is that our ladies are, our, our black females are audacity. They're, they're mining their audacity. And we see it on a daily, daily, on a daily basis. I think we should be doing the same and to make sure whenever there were better losses is because we couldn't defend what we have captured. Whatever we made, and you look back over our history, when everything went horribly wrong, it's because there was no one with the spear defending, defending what we made. Okay, any last comments, folks? Because we want to make sure when we go together, we got some stuff for the ladies. <laughs> we got some stuff for any other to-dos. We've got new circles, interjecting ourselves, introducing ourselves into new circles, partnerships, and watermelon, watermelon and, and grape. And grape. Accepting some level of discomfort. Okay. The willingness to accept the levels of discomfort. Confidence, knowledge, understanding. Starting small. It's okay. It's okay. Starting small. Unlearning what we've learned, even when it was learned for our quote unquote best interest. Okay. Having revolutionary approaches and then creating some systems that can be replicated and taught and passed down. Not a bad set. Anything else? Any other contributions to the list? I'm going to hit them with it when I get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I would say, you know, having some type of uh, evaluation, you know, hmm. being able to assess Ooh, where, where are we gone? You know, mm. are we able to sustain this this audacity, this bra this brazenness that we have, mm. or have we just shot our shot just enough? Yeah. Where we? I love it, yeah. so, sir. You, you put something on my on my head, and I I was I said I wasn't going to talk about. It. <laughs> I said what I'm going to talk about, but I want to talk about it. Talk on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ed Reed and Bethune Cookman. Mm. Okay. Now I don't condone the language. Mm -hmm. I don't control. I don't condone the 
messaging. Mm -hmm. But doggone it, the message was pretty powerful. We, yes. we can debate whether it was appropriate or not. But the message of, wait a minute, you guys, you aren't focused on, you aren't making the main thing the main thing. Okay. Um, I, I thought it was very interesting. And, 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 and many of the first reactions was, sir, to your point. Don't say that out loud. Mm -hmm. we, don't critique, we don't critique ourselves out loud. I was like, no, that's what it needs to be said. Mm -hmm. That's what it needs to be said because nothing will change if we don't do the evaluation of ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we don't put some type of measure up mm -hmm. and say, how do we measure up? Mm -hmm. Okay, And we always say, no, we don't go measure. We just go, you know, they do, they're doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. Okay, If that's always the answer, then we never get to a, a place where after the evaluation, there's some there's some new day, some new thing, some evolution. Yes, sir. What do we do about evil threats and just evolve? Uh, yeah. We have to evolve after that. It's yes. Like, so we have to actually continually evolve because we see history. And we have so many people who get caught up in history and stay back there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that we don't go ahead and make sure we don't make the same mistakes and we don't yeah. look at history and learn from history, but we don't continue on where we're at right now because yeah. we're not going to grow. You know, my family never talked about um, life insurance, never talked about um, stocks, really? insurance, okay. trusts, foundations and everything. Never talked about that. It's like that. But now I'm talking about that with my daughter. I'm yeah. evolving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I just think there is some self-assessing that we have to do as a, as a community. Okay? I just think there's some self-assessing. I, th I think my normal five minutes is up. Got it. Yeah, no, it, it just it just ended. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let our powers combine now and head over to the conference room where the women are. However, sandwiches, chips, and water over here. If y'all didn't get it during uh, this conversation, then please grab some now and we'll head over there. Right. Straight to the other side of the building. Wayne to say that as powers, but <laughs> <laughs> our powers combined. We gotta talk, brother. We gotta talk about your.